I'm trying to save you. I'm like the Jacob Marley of of uh, <laughs> <laughs> of our house. And look at all these shackles that bind me down. You don't want to be like me. Reform now, whilst you still can. Turn back, turn back, son. <laughs> but he's he's just going like headlong into it. No sunlight or Seeds of pain and There's a talk doesn't know how Doesn't bottle does anyhow Let on the street the bore And I'll show so much more When you go brains at the Welcome back to Cerebrivore. I'm your host, Jason. Today, I've got a fun conversation with Colin Green from the Spike Pit Podcast. Colin has just passed the 500th episode of his show. His show has morphed over the years. He's done different things, but he is an inspiration to all of us, you know, former anchorites and podcasters. And today, we talk about how our tastes have changed over the years, how we curate our collections and kind of get a little bit down memory lane. I hope you enjoy this discussion. Next week, I'll be back with the bonus episode where we do the next stage in Conan's adventure, in Conan the Undaunted, Endless Quest Book 19. You can go back and listen to the previous episode and leave me feedback on what you think Conan should do. You have until the 19th of April, 2023, to call that in. And all the ways to do that are in the show notes, so go check out the Conan show notes. The conceit here, of course, is that you, the listeners, will decide what Conan does next, and I will read the next section of the book based on the decisions that you, the listeners, make. So get those votes in, and now grab your favorite beverage, sit down, and enjoy the discussion. Welcome back, everybody. I have joining me today a grand old man of podcasting himself, Colin from Spike Pit. How are you doing, sir? I'm good. Thanks, Jason. Yourself, mate? You good? Excellent. A- excellent. Yeah, it's it's been a long time since we've talked, and I'm glad to get on the microphone with you again. You know, we, we've been lucky enough over the years to play in a couple games together and, and do a couple of interviews together, but it's been far too infrequent. For sure. Uh, I mean, I just re-released uh, my episode 400, mm-hmm. uh, 300, 300 which was with yourself, of course. And we were talking about 300. Uh, seemingly, it was a little bit contentious. Uh, and I didn't realise that going in. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I think we we muddled through and enjoyed doing it. So it's, it's good mm-hmm. to get back to the mic with you. Oh, definitely. Yeah, and, and it's interesting because, you know, movies are still just as potentially contentious and and, and all these days. But it's it, but, but it's interesting how the market's evolved, right? So re- really quick sidestep, because, you know, it wouldn't be a, a podcast with me if we didn't go off on a tangent. But, you know, we think back to, you know, we're roughly the same age, and I, and I won't call you out on, on how old you are, but we're, we're roughly in that category, I think. And so I remember, you know, growing up watching like the heavy metal cartoon. And I don't know if you've seen that or when you, what point you might have seen that, but that's like early 80s, right? And in the heavy metal cartoon, there's quite, you know, there, there's nudity in that cartoon. There's quite a bit of kind of the male gaze kind of nudity. It's based on the heavy metal comic or the magazine, that the kind of art magazine was out that was really big in the 80s and, and even in the 90s. Well, nowadays, there's so a few years ago, there's a, a animated movie called The Spine of Night. And I don't know if you've seen that, but if not, I, I would recommend it. And it's got some animated nudity in there as well, but it's not the male gaze sort of, right? And right. and it's much more we we see where the the genre it's still sword and sorcery and it's still like the high fantasy kind of thing, but they moved away from the fact of just objectifying women like what we had in the eighties, mm-hmm. and 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 so things have moved on, which is good, you know. But that that kind of does bring us back to what I want to talk about a little bit and how gaming tastes move on a little bit because we both started gaming what late seventies early eighties mm-hmm. I, I would would say is probably accurate, and and we've both done role-playing games, board games, and miniature war games. Mm-hmm. And, and we're, we're still kind of messing with those things today. And that's one of the great things. You know, that was the intent of my podcast, although I've almost solely focused on role-playing games as opposed to the other two types of games. You do manage to talk about all three on your show. And, and so I was kind of curious how our tastes have changed and evolved 
over the years. Yeah, well, I think it's an interesting topic. Um, personally, I think I've got a tendency to move in circles. So I tend to go through phases and I cycle back round. And at the moment, interesting, you mentioned the early 80s, because I've cycled back round to my um, interest in the line art and stuff from fighting fantasy in particular the monster books Mm -hmm. because i i decided i had a little bit of a a dissatisfaction with some of the way my collection of monster information exists it's in all all these different books and then i've got these these images from my early rpg experience that is just kind of like locked away and I can't sort of share it very easily or anything like that. And I thought, this is a, this is a real shame. What could I do about it? So what I've been doing is basically getting those images. And I I talk quite a lot about using Google slides, but I've been putting these images onto slides and more or less doing this process of cataloging stuff. Um, And for example, out of the pit, is 216 monsters and that's 216 images that I'm in I'm, I'm like I'm, I'm not even scanning them I'm photographing them with my phone and then like cleaning up the images so you can imagine it's quite an undertaking mm-hmm. uh, and, and then what I want to do is I'm I'm going to link them all with hyperlinks to a kind of contents page and go forward like that but it's it's wanting it it's wanting to do stuff and capture some of that some of that well it's a little bit that nostalgia it's a little it ties in with some other themes that i've got going on and we'll perhaps come on to later but yeah i don't know i i've lost the train of thought there jason but you know it's it's anchorites or former anchorites and we're gonna ramble so <laughs> perhaps you can pick something out of that that i've thrown to you there a hundred percent i i think it's interesting and especially so we are without a doubt in the golden age of gaming right where mm-hmm. not only do we have access to most of the things around the, we're from our youth i'm not speaking well today sorry but a, a lot of the games we played back in the day are available as legal pdfs or legal print on demands so we're not, you don't have, while well, you could pay top dollar for old copies, you don't necessarily have to. There are some exceptions to that, but a lot of them are available. And even the ones that aren't available, if you, and I'm not even talking about bootleg copies or pirated copies, but if you do Google search, so like the, the Stormbringer game by Chaosium mm-hmm. isn't legally available as a PDF right now, right? right? Because of the rights issue. But if you get on Google and you type in, you know, cover image or or type in for an art piece from that. Somebody scanned it. Somebody's taken a picture of it, and it's online. So mm-hmm. it's easier than ever to get those pictures digitalized and 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 those images that are just burned into our heads. Because I remember, you know, because back in the day, you didn't have the internet, you didn't have any of that. And and I know I spent hours just going through those books, and and I have a lot of those images just burned into my brain where. Mm. You know, I remember from those early days, those first RPG books make that huge impression on you. And yeah. and you can remember those images. And and now we have the ability to share that. Like you say, you know, you can digitalize it and then your players, whether it's online, you flash that picture up when the creature comes out or even at the table, whether you just hold up your tablet to show the players sitting there in the room with you, you, you know. Yeah. So, yeah. so, yeah, it's great. It's interesting you talk about like changing tastes. And I, I thought about this idea that, in fact, I think what has changed for me more is it's the my needs. So my needs have changed, mm-hmm. and, and and that is where technology has come to my aid because I can. I, it gives you this flexibility, like you say, you've got access to the internet, you've got access to these doc digitized documents. So you don't have to lug around all your collection and invariably you forget or you can't lay your hands for one reason or another on what you're looking for. But if you've spent a bit of time and got yourself set up with your device, it, it you can have it all there. Now, it does take some time, 
and mm. I was talking about the cataloging process and that. Fortunately, I've I'm drawing from books that I own. I can imagine it'd be a nightmare trying to track this stuff down. Um, well, for example, the creature catalog, the the, um, the UK the UK uh-huh. TSR version. I I had the hard copy of that, and I thought, oh, now nah, I'm I won't mess about with all that. I'll pick up the I'll go on um, DMs Guild. I'll get the PDF version. And I was disappointed. I thought, no, surely not. You know, the, the, it was fine to use, but if you were going to make a slide presentation with it, the images are just not really good enough. They're, they're, they're quite lackluster. Um, so that's what kicked off. So in some ways, it's an argument for kind of keeping your stuff. But if you haven't got that stuff to keep, then you haven't got that problem either. So, um, yeah, I... It's changing needs, and and I think the and we talked about age a little bit. I think the enemy, and and what's influencing my needs a lot is time. You t- you talk about time all the time. Um. So, Hed, would you? What's your what's your thoughts on the the change versus need kind of changing needs versus changing tastes? Do you? What do you yeah. think, Jason? Yeah, I think it's it's really interesting, and, and there's definitely been an e- evolution. And, and I think maybe ICRPG is one of the great examples of that when we look at that game system, because back in the day, and especially prior to becoming adults and entering the professional world, w- whatever job we entered into, for some reason it seemed you know as much schoolwork and whatnot as we did in high school, or even you know, after high school or, you know, after your primary education and when you went on to university or whatever over there, it, we seem like there's a lot more time to game, right? Yeah. It, it just for whatever reason, it, it just worked out that way. And so like AD and D first edition with all the subsystems and all that. And I, I enjoy all those things and those little TD, tedious might not be a fair word to use, but tedious detailed systems and, and in-depth things that, was a lot of fun back then. And I still play AD&D first edition. I'm in a bi-weekly game and we use the systems, but today with a lot of the games being shorter, you know, we're not playing five, six hour sessions anymore. You know, something like ICRPG where you, you still can have the flavor of the game, but, but it's simplified streamlined mechanics. So mm-hmm. it moves along. The game can move along a lot faster without mm-hmm. flipping and turning and looking for this rule or that rule or the sub sub tables and all that. I, I think as much as I love, say, AD&D First Edition, if I was introducing new people to role-playing games, I would not use AD&D First Edition. I use something like ICRPG. And mm. if, if I was in a, a two-hour-a-week game online, I would use something like ICRPG o- over AD&D First Edition because you're going to get so much more done. And you know, arguably, you're not going to lose any quality of the game by doing that either. You, you know, you're, you, So I, I think that's definitely a part of the changing taste it's not that i don't like the old things anymore but i can definitely appreciate the streamlining uh, of some of these new systems that were like the black hack we we were in a a long term black hack game and that game there there, it didn't lack for flavor and it didn't lack for interesting things happening in the game i mean i don't think the simplified mechanics of that game didn't hurt that game at all Uh, we had a blast playing that game oh definitely yeah that 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 was a great game Uh, and they're both they're they're both good examples of an evolution for mm-hmm. sure, and and the tendency. I mean, I've talked a lot about lighter games and how you can keep. Well, I'm currently re releasing those episodes as well, talking about the 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 ha- bringing longevity and depth into your game. It doesn't necessarily need to be through rules, um, and there are quite a few people called in and had theories on that, of course, but it is driven by like you were saying perhaps we have this in common as adults that push for time so it's your it's your needs maybe impacting on what you then perceive as your tastes uh maybe sometimes it is gen- genuinely your t- your taste you know you you mature a bit and some stuff um for example like my youngest he tends to gravitate towards 5e because he likes to sit down, spend time just going through them books and looking at the options. And he wants to play the guy with all the stuff, you know, mm-hmm. and he, 
You know, he really cares about how much starting gold he's got. Um, and increasingly, as I've got older, I'm, I'm pretty sure, well, I don't care about that at all. He, you know, you're more, you're, well, I think it was a black hack. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was the black hack where my character took all his starting money and blew it on a drink at the beginning of the mm, game. Weren't that? We, we just had that yeah. big party, yeah. Yep. <laughs> just yeah. Just to get just to get popular with the locals, and that was it. That was that money gone. Well, I, I, I don't think I would have ever done that when I was a youngster. That well, just definitely our yeah, our playing styles I I think have evolved to some degree. It's funny because my son is he's a little bit older. He's 26, but he he's the same way. He loves deck building games. And it, well, he's so like I have Talisman Second Edition, the old board game, you know, GW mm-hmm. board game. And but but his, you know, he's in no rush to get the Crown of Control, he or Crown of Command. He yeah. his, his favorite thing is to go around the board and just build up his character and build up his character and build up his character, right? And um, mm-hmm. yeah, it's interesting. Which was, yeah, potential flaw of that game, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. There weren't necessarily much pushing you to get to that crown, and right, it, well. It, yeah, and that maybe that brings us to board games today because some board games back in the day had timers on there, and they had things that like like I remember I've got I still have there's a it's kind of like Dungeon the the old TSR Dungeon game, but Iron Crown Enterprises came out with a Middle Earth inspired game, um, the Lonely Mountain, and the Lonely Mountain the idea is you're a group of venturers, everybody has their own group of venturers. They might be orcs, or they might be humans, or they might be dwarves. But you're trying to get all the gold out of Smog's mountain before Smog wakes up. And mm-hmm. there's a timer because once Smog wakes up, he starts closing the exits. And once he closes all the exits, you're done because you can't kill Smog, right? He's going to get you. And But a lot of the games back in the day didn't have a timer on it, really. Where most board games today that I've encountered, whether it's Descent or whether, you know, whatever game, they have built they have timers built into them to to, you know, force that game time and, and to force you to move ahead you can't just take time to build your character up i don't know if you've noticed that more games that you play yeah well games get judged on on their time a lot don't they uh, and and we're sitting here saying that you know we're, we're pushed for time and we're sort of assuming that it's to do with our work and maybe just people in general don't want to spend time on stuff so much i don't I don't know. I mean, because we talk about youngsters potentially with a shorter span of attention. Maybe people just don't play these games for the length of time that perhaps we did back in the day. I mean, for example, we finally got Blood Bowl back back to the mm-hmm. table uh, because I've had some time off. I introduced my son to it, got it, bought him the latest edition, and we played it. Now, for some reason, and I don't remember it, taking this on it we were playing for five hours five hours for a game mm-hmm. of blood bowl and i really don't remember that i remember the very first blood bowl before they had it organized in the way they got it now but it did it used to take forever the original blood bowl um but they got that sorted out and they got it into two halves and stuff because it used to just be on touchdowns and it was really really long ridiculously long and everybody just ended up getting took off the pitch before you resolved the game. It was, mm-hmm. The first version was terrible, the old, old, old one. Um, but I don't remember it taking five hours. And admittedly, we both had to sort out our team rosters. We made up teams. We had to go back through the rules a little bit. But even so, I was sh- I was quite shocked at five hours. Uh, it, it, he, it's he said. Though. He said, "That is, oh man, that is a long game." It was almost putting him off, you know. Mm-hmm. It, it's interesting because we've seen the evolution of other games. Like Car Wars is a great example. The original Car Wars is is as innovative a game as it was, an interesting game as it was. Did take a long time to play. Where, you know, my understanding is now you've got you're up to six, I think sixth edition Car Wars or something, and they've gone through different iterations of the rules, and it's much more streamlined these days. Where you know where Steve Jackson Games has kind of responded to those criticisms and and updated it. I I can remember you know back in the day, and this was even like going into the army, w- playing things like Axis and Allies or the original BattleTech. Like I've still got the original like nineteen eighty four BattleTech box set, and, and those game those went hour all night long. We 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 play all night like Axis and Allies is you know that'll take you all night to play that if you you know and and, and you play it so long. You start to get weary, and 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 and, and tempers start to get strained mm-hmm. a little bit, and you, you know, and it's it maybe it definitely goes on a little bit too long. I think 
So <laughs> I, I need to pick up the latest Blood Bowl. I, I That's a really neat game. I, I've always enjoyed Blood Bowl. And yeah, I need to pick yeah. up the latest iteration of the rules. It's, um, I think it's really quite accessible. And um, take uh, set up and take down is good. I reckon, I reckon we could halve that and, and get it down to probably a couple of hours. Now that's not a quick game. Two hours is not a quick game. And I was, I was going to say, I think if, if you're a board game manufacturer, or you're designing board games, you really want to think very hard about going above the two hour mark. I, I, I you know, and some games are really punishing when you start adding a few players. And that's the thing. So guidelines on the box are so often way out, way out. And you you add players and it can kill it kills some games stone dead. Really good mm-hmm. games. You add like a, a fifth player or something like that, and it's and they say that you can have that many players, but it, it really bogs down the game. But that that shouldn't be the case in Blood Bowl. Obviously, you've only got two players. But right, yeah, I think of another. It, we, we talk about changing pace in games. If I and I am in the process of you know going through and and narrowing my collection down and and getting rid of games I don't play. And but like one game I'll definitely keep for like dungeon crawl board games. I I know your brother's not a huge fan of dungeon crawl board games because he he says just play an RPG. But yeah, we don't. You know, he does like he does like him, um, but he he does he does like to make the distinction between the two things. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think, yeah, and, and, and I think it's a fair distinction. I I do. I, I I definitely see where he comes from with that. But one of my favorite board games of that genre is the old Warhammer Quest from the nineteen nineties. GW's Warhammer Quest, and that game at low level it moves along pretty well. But as those characters get high level and you have so many options and you're sitting there and you need a whole card table to have all the all the little cards and bits and bobs and things that the character has. Mm-hmm. Like it just, you know, a turn takes half an hour or something just because of how much stuff each character has, you know. And yeah. it, it so that that's a game that definitely feels that weight of uh, of that. But but it's still by far my favorite game of that genre. And I'm not sure why, but I. If I could only have one Dungeon Crawl board game, it would be Warhammer Quest. Oh, wow. We've actually been playing one. It's not really a Dungeon Crawl. It's, I think it's called... Um, well, it's it's called Wildlands. Mm-hmm. Is it Wildlands or Wildlanders? Anyway, it's an Osprey Games um, title. It's got quite an interesting... It's kind of card-driven, um, and you've got different different factions within a kind of a a dungeon-ish kind of almost, um, well, just a kind of generic fantasy setting, you know. Uh, You've got some corridors and and you've got obscuring terrain. Certain squares are regarded as like kind of got some cover. And you're going around, you're collecting these gems and you're getting like victory points for collecting the gems and you're getting victory points for uh, defeating opponents. But it just plays really smoothly. It's got a um, a pretty modern kind of feel to the design of it. It's not not your typical kind of hero quest type of dungeon crawler, and it's it's not like Descent. It's not like anything I really played before. But it was an economical purchase. My eldest son picked it up recently, and I'd say that more or less. C- Came out of the box onto the table. We played it, and it virtually went straight to the top of the pile in terms of my opinion of of those type of games. Um, I forget what the other one is with the little chibi type miniatures. No, oh, I, not... I, not, I, I think I, I, a buddy of mine had one. Has that been out for maybe a decade or so? The one, with the yeah. Stuff? I, I know what you're. I don't remember the title. No, I never owned that one. A buddy of mine has it, and we've played it, and it's a fun little game. Yeah, I um, can't remember what it's called. Yeah, I, I didn't buy into that. I've got so, so you, you know what? Prior to re- starting the recording, we you know talked about potential topics and things like distractors and how do you pick how do you pick those favorite games and how do you yeah. how do you curate your collection? And, and I've got a ton of dungeon crawl board games, some that have never been out of the box, right? Yeah. That I bought Kickstarters and just never even opened the box. I've got 
there's the zombie side um black plague which is a medieval version of zombie side now they have a new one coming out white plague i think but mm -hmm. the the one i've got it's not even out of the box swords sword and wizard sword and sorcery it's called i'm looking at the box right now not out of the box um i've just got a ton of these things all the the new they've come out of the box i've got all the new games workshop warhammer quest games that come out but they just don't feel the same to me as as the original no, it's, but it's it's funny yeah. how, how have you managed to curate between that like old favorites and, and 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 i know you're making a point of trying to play the games before you decide to let them go yeah i've uh, some some I know that uh, uh, you know you, you look at them and you just think no there's there's nobody else who wants to play them. Um, see my my favourite games nowadays talking about needs and taste is the ones that I can get to the table and if I can't get it to the table, I've got to have some like really good sound reasoning as to why I'm keeping it because what is the point of a you know a board game that's not hitting the table and so that's like at the front of my mind then some sometimes it's well it's really sought after and there's people that are like more or less bite your hand off to get that game and you think well I'm not that fussed. I I almost would rather they just had, you know, I'd rather just sort of like sell it. You're probably going to get decent money for it and you can put it towards something that you really actually going to use and you need. Um, and this kind of like feels like it's going to potentially a better home. Mm -hmm. So that, that might be a factor. Um, some stuff you just got to really like, like my old, my lot, old beck me rules they were the rules i actually played with i carried them about with me and there's hours of use and 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 like my life tied up with them so there'd be something i wouldn't say i wouldn't get rid of but i'm very unlikely to they're not taking up a lot of space they, they don't harm and there's a real like really good nostalgia value um Sometimes you've got, you know, the massive games where you just got, you got a little bit obsessed by them and then like some kind of completionist instinct took over and you just went like you bought into it just to a silly amount that you almost ruined it yourself because you just got too much of it. They're the ones that I try and get, they're the ones I try and get rid of. It, it's You mentioned that and I mentioned Talisman earlier, Talisman Second Edition kind of can fall into that because there are so many expansions for that, right? Like the city and this and that. Totally. And, and 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 you could fill up your whole living room with those boards laid out trying to play it. Or Arkham Horror. I don't know Fantasy Flight's Arkham Horror. I've got that. I've got so many expansions for that. <laughs> the, not like the second edition of that, right? This, you know, from 15 years ago or something. And I've got, yeah. It, and, and but I haven't touched it since we moved to this house a decade ago. So, and, but, and you bring up an interesting point. Uh, I, I think that we, and I, I might be alone on this, but I think we are the, and I should have written this down before I said it, but we're, we are the, um, this isn't the right word, but we're the guardians of the stuff we own, right? We, we are, are the caretakers. That's the word I want. We're the caretakers of these games and these books and all that. And if we're using them, great. But if not, then there is almost a... I won't say duty. That sounds too high to high fluting, but 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 we but it's almost better to let it go to somebody that's going to use it. Yeah. Right. And and let it, it instead of sitting on my shelf gathering dust for ten years, never being touched. It would be better going to somebody that's actually going to break it open, play it with their kids. Mm -hmm. you, you know, enjoy it. Mm. And, and yeah. that's where I'm getting to now. Yeah, definitely. And I. Don't get me wrong. I've I've got rid of a lot of stuff, but it it's really. Sometimes I feel like I'm stuck between a rock and a hard place, um, because I know I don't want to keep it because like I find it sometimes demoralizing because it's there, it's unplayed, and I can see it, and it's like, why have I like why have I failed in getting this to the table? And that is irritating. 
And then at the same time, you're sort of like part of you doesn't want to give up and part of you says, no, I need to, because it is preventing you from actually playing games. Because if I've got a limited amount of time and I'm just moving stuff around or I'm organising or I'm I'm putting stuff away or I'm getting it in the neck from my better half because I've not packed something away because there wasn't space to put it away, all of that type of stuff. If I just had less, I, I would probably play more. Mm-hmm. So I've started like having, because it's not just focus, it's, uh, it's not just time, it's focus. For me, it's focus. Now, I don't know if this is a bit of like ADHD or something like that, and people, people joke about it, but my attention, you know, we, we have these distractions. Distractions come along and, and procrastination. And the combination of procrastination and distraction, that's what stops me from playing games. And sometimes I'd, I'll even like dress it up and kid myself that I need to be doing this like lonely fun and I need to be doing this research and I need to be doing this preparation. But really, probably if I if I look hard at myself, I'm just kind of delaying organizing something or breaking out a game and going through the rules because I'm so bad. I'm so bad at learning new games and teaching them and I get like I get anxious about it. So I I have to lean on other people, you know, like my brother. I'll say, look, this, I want to really play this game. Let's just get something in the diary. And, you know, that's how I did it with Blood Bowl. That's how I've done it with getting Man of War back onto the table. And then, like, I've got my GMT games and I've got Talon, which is a space fighter game, uh, a Starship combat game. Got that to the table. All three of those has happened this week. So I'm like, yes, really happy about that. Just focused, got some outside help. Admittedly, it's just my brother, but that was enough because I was committed. I said I was going to do it. I've committed. I've made an arrangement with somebody else. It's like going down the gym or something. You get that gym buddy that makes you go. It's the same. And that's that's worked out, so I'm very happy about that. And there, there'll be games now that I'll keep for a while and – that because they're not there, they're not goading me. They don't wind me up. I can like tick off a little mm-hmm. check mark in my in my in my mind. Um. So there's that. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So, and I like you mentioned, you you sold off a number of things. Is there anything that you you miss or you kind of you, you know feel is a misstep to let go, or any or maybe an easier question? Is there anything that you oh, and not necessarily recently, but is there anything you sold that you bought back? You know, down the road or bought another copy of well my my brother sold first edition talisman the first talisman mm-hmm. um and i don't think i don't i don't think he really i don't think he realized the uh the kind of emotional attachment to that because that was really the first proper board game back around the time when i was learning D and had mrs mcconaughey there teaching us and she also made she basically made a bootleg copy of talisman for herself her friend had it and this was i mean because these games were quite expensive back mm-hmm. in the day and she was a, a single mum um or well, divorced and um she didn't have the cash so she, she had a, a sister or a friend had talisman she basically like photocopied everything and mounted it onto little bits of card and made a board and colored it in and everything and it must have taken her so long mm-hmm. but um just super frugal like that and and of course i mean she was using it in schools so i don't i, don't, I can't I, she didn't talk a lot about it but she she, she sort of was grinning when she said about it, you know, mm-hmm. um, and then I, I ended up, I think we got a copy Christmas or birthday and I, I just loved it. I loved the art. I loved the, like the yellow dragon and the green box. And, um, I just loved it. I think it's the same artist that did a lot of the white wolf stuff back in the day or lone wolf, the lone wolf stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and in the end, my brother bought me a few years back. He bought me a copy on the used market to replace it. Um, he didn't have to. It was just 
I mean, I haven't played it, but I do get it out because I just like to look at the cards on that one and uh, re- uh, reminisce. Right. So that was one. Uh, how about you, Jace? You got any sort of like any missteps or? Um, probably. I'd have to. I, I, I'm asking the questions here. No, I, I kid. I kid. <laughs> I, I, I kid. I kid. Um, I I don't know. I there definitely are, and I asked you that without preparing an answer <laughs> myself. Uh, I know there are games that 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 I've ha- that I've had that I I don't have copies of, or I don't know what happened to them. In, in this last move, actually, there's a game. Um, I'm looking at the expansion for it right now. The expansion's Curse Sands. I'm trying to remember what the name of the. I'd have to get up and walk over to see what the name of the game of, but it's an asymmetric. This isn't from when I was a kid, but this is more recently, but it's an asymmetrical game board game where one player is like the overlord and one player is the hero, Mm -hmm. but you play through these quests and and it's a really interesting game. And I can't find after the move, I it's called fallen. Um, Like somebody's fallen off, fallen from somewhere. It's called fallen. And I can't find the base set for it. I've is that this. the one? Is that the one by? Uh, is that a sort of um, post-apocalyptic game? No, it's it, this one's medieval. Um, uh, yeah, this one's medieval. It's um, or fantasy, I should say. But it um is it, it's a really interesting game, and it's one of those games. It's one of those weird Kickstarter kind of misstarts where they uh, re- they had so many uh, stretch goals that were only for Kickstarter backers. Like mm-hmm. and and I have all those where I had them before I lost it, but that where if you back on the Kickstarter, you got about twice the content of somebody bought the commercial copy. Oh and, yeah, and and so it was one of those kind of weird missteps. But yeah, it's a 2014 game, but I can't find the I don't know where the base game is, so I can't play it right now with my son because I only have the expansions for it, and it's gotten quite expensive these days. Um, yeah, especially with all those expansions. But I I think that's the most. I, I've got a lot of the stuff from when I was a kid still, so I can't, you, you, you know, luckily I, I still have a lot of those things, but I, um, yeah, I, I don't know. It's, although the one I don't have that is just as well, cause it's one of those all night games, they made Axe and Allies and they also did a version of that that was set in America. It was kind of like a Red Dawn, the movie Red Dawn or one of those things oh, yeah. where America's being invaded from three different sides and up from Mexico. I forget what it was called. Oh that. yeah. And that uh, was a, it, it basically oh, was that's fam- Yeah, that's a famous game, isn't it? What is it? Fortress Fortress, Fortress America. That's it. Fortress America. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't have that anymore. I had that. That was a I remember that being a fun game, but mm-hmm. again, it was an all night long game. You, you know, one of those games it would take three days to play, you know, it, it, the length of sessions we typically play nowadays. I've uh, heard quite a few people say they they love that game. There's a lot of fondness for that game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a. I, I don't know. It's it's kind of interesting, but I, I suppose you haven't really got big into the getting rid of the stuff yet. So the chances are you perhaps haven't had much opportunity to make those missteps at this point. No, but it, it's coming up here shortly. As mm-hmm. you know, I'm on vacation this week and next week as we record this, and I'm working on my list. You know, and once my lists are made up. My, my my son has gone through and made a co- made a list of the dozen board games that he wants to keep. The miniature board games are a little bit easier because you know they're mainly rule books, right? I mean, we have some yeah. miniatures and all that, but we're not tackling that right now. No. And and again, the RPGs, although there's RPGs, I'm going to let go definitely that I bought and I've like complete sets of, but I've never played, probably never will play, so doesn't make sense to keep them, you know. But the board games are the harder thing, and he's made a list of the dozen board games that he wants to keep. And I need to sit down and make a list of a dozen that I want to keep. And then we'll probably have a fudge factor of, you know, maybe five more games each or five that we agree on. And um, and the rest of them I'll post in the discords. And if people don't want them or I can't move them, I'll sell. there's a reseller called Noble Knight that gives you pennies on the dollar. For, yeah, you, yeah. You, but I mean, it's it's better than nothing. And it yep. and it'll go somewhere where somebody will eventually get it to play. So. Yeah. And and I think that's more important nowadays. You, you know, I've got these games that eat, still in the shrink wrap sitting there. Expansions. Like for the, I don't know if you ever played the Legendary game, the Marvel Super Heroes card game. The, it was called no. Legendary. And they also had an Alien version, one for Aliens and oh. X-Files and Buffy. And 
they, they legendary, did it for a number of legendary things. yeah you kind of have symbols on your cards right and it's mm-hmm. like a bit of a deck builder and it's yep. a sort of semi-cooperative you're sort of like good-natured competition between mm-hmm. each other that's it yeah i've got i've got expansions for that i'm looking at one on the shelf now civil war that's not even open <laughs> Oh, I'm, right. I'm going to let those. I'm going to now. What I will keep for that are the alien. So the the version they did that for Alien Aliens was really good, and it, it has was. like a Predator tie in, and, and it's really good. And I'm keeping it that captured it. It, it, it captured it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm keeping yeah. those, but the superhero one I'm going to let go because it's not for me. the The best superhero game is Sentinels of the Multiverse. That's the best well, yeah. kind of card and board superhero game. So that's the only superhero game I'm going to keep. But have you thought? Have you thought about doing it like that? I, I've um, just the way you're talking now makes me think in terms of, you know, when you're making up your list, are you going to be thinking like, I want to, uh, what's my fantasy one? What's my deck builder? You're going to kind of have like representations of sort of maybe because you could do it like genres or like game mechanisms. Or, you know, like, so your party game, your, your kind of maybe your family game, your deck builder, your your hero game. I, I, I am indeed, like, for the, the family or maybe not family as much as a party game or for non-gamers, I have a game called Golf Mania where, right. where you're doing, like, a golfing. And, and it's a good it's a good draw-in for people that aren't into board games that, that can sit down and play it. And, and so I've got that it, for deck. I actually, there's a game called um, Shadow Rift. I don't know if you ever played that. It's... It's a right. it's a deck building game, and I actually like that better than uh, what was the something Thunderstone? I think was the big oh, one back yeah. a long time. I've got I think I've got everything for Thunderstone too, and in fact, I've got everything for two or three editions of Thunderstone. I think because they yeah. went through a number of editions of that game. But I actually yeah. like Shadow Rift a little bit better than that game. So so I'll, I'll keep Shadow Rift. I'll let Thunderstone go. Um, yeah, I, I'm kind of working that way. Like I said, Warhammer Quest is the, the dungeon crawl now. Luckily, because my son's picking the games he likes, there's some overlap in there. We're not picking the same games. So, mm-hmm. you know, like he he wants to keep Descent and he wants to keep Imperial Assault, which is a Star Wars version of Descent. So, you, you know, luckily I yeah. don't have to make that choice since he's already picked it. it it's a little bit easier on me. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. I don't have to make those hard choices, but yeah. Imperial Assault is that that's one of those games. That's one of those games that I got a little bit of resentment for. <laughs> I, I I bought in. I bought in quite hard, mm-hmm. and uh, and then it it like bulked up, and there was more and more expensive expansions. And I I, I kind of I got a real love hate for it. You know, I, I like it and I don't like it. And I, that's one of them. That's one of them real dangerous games in my collection that I could quite easily go oh. Get rid of it, and then I think that could be one of them, and it'd come back and haunt me. And I'd be like, "Oh yeah, I remember that. Oh yeah, we had some fun," and and that's when them doubts come in. That would be a very dodgy game for me. It and it's an interesting game because they gave you the rules to do a skirmish game yes. with the miniatures, so you could either play the board game, and the board game has multiple versions of play. You could have one player playing the Imperial yeah. forces and one playing the Rebels, or there's co-op rules. And and there, I assume you can still. There used to be like an app that would computerize that to play co-op. They I did. assume that's still out there. And then it has the skirmish rules where you could set up, take the miniatures, and and play skirmish war game with it. So, but yeah. but you're right. They they came out with the miniature packs with individual miniatures in there yeah. for for special NPCs and special characters. Yeah, I've got about half of the. I only have about half of the things released for Imperial Assault. I don't have it all, but I, I've got it's that's still quite a bit, right? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I never got, I never got the best bin expansion, and so many times I, I come close, you know, because mm-hmm. Fantasy Flight, they make things look really nice. They're really beguiling. They're really expensive. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And, and 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 the floor plans, it's all like it all seems infinitely useful as well. You think, oh, well, I could use them floor plans for something else. I could use them figures for something else. I could use this. Could I could do this? I could do that. How much of it do I actually do? None. I ne- I never <laughs> get that stuff out. I never reuse it. I don't use the figures for anything else. But it just looks like I could, and I mm-hmm. I, I could, I could, but I don't, and I don't know why. I don't know why. I don't know how they do it. 
Yeah. Uh, I, I have <laughs> I have games like I've got so I still have and these will probably be like oh the D and D adventure games that start with a with Ravenloft and and then they came out with a, a number of other ones and I've got all those and then I also bought in they did TSR or it was it was Wizards of the Coast I'm sorry came out with Dungeon Command figures where it was like a skirmish game around the time that those were out but those figures kind of they're the exact same scale. And you can kind of mix and match and use them together a little bit. And and so and, and I've got all the Dungeon Command stuff to go with that with the idea of, yeah, eventually I'll do something with all this. And there are fan based expansions like you can download scenarios to add on to those games using the Dungeon Command miniatures and all that. But, I, you know, I haven't done any of that. And so I'll yeah. probably let all that go. Conan, the I don't know if you ever played Con- Monolith's Conan board game. It's. Normally, a two-player game. There are some solo co-op scenarios, but mostly you have an overlord. You have the heroes, but I've got I've got everything for that, and that's a game I I enjoy quite a bit. That I'll I'll keep that. We'll, we'll see. It, it's interesting. I know you, that you've resisted. Maybe your resistance to board games and miniature games isn't as strong, but you've been really good at resisting new role-playing games and role-playing game products. And we have yeah. a new Conan game coming out by Monolith, so we'll see if you if you can resist that. But uh, I will resist. I will resist. Um, my shelf of shame is is too much. I don't have a lot of difficulty resisting most board games. The one that I struggled with most recently was Undaunted, mm-hmm. the Stalingrad. Because I was kind of getting into the collector mentality on, on that one, and I managed to hold off. But the thing is, now see, I've got a, I've got a bit of a traitor in the camp because my 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 eldest son, he's buying games now, and he's he's buying them, and I'm saying, and I'm trying to I'm trying to put him right and say, look, don't be like me, and I'll like stand there and I'll show him the games. I say, look, look at all the hassle that I've got now. I'm trying to save you. I'm like the Jacob Marley of of uh, <laughs> of our house. And look at all these shackles that bind me down. You don't want to be like me. Reform now whilst you still can. Turn back. Turn back, son. <laughs> but he's he's just going like headlong into it. But to be fair, he he gets them out, he plays them, he learns the rules, and he 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 plays in a couple of like friendship groups. He plays my brother and that and I mean they're even going away next week uh to a house they've rented out like a like a cottage and they'll do like a mini convention and they're playing board games for a week they're playing board games for a week they have sign up sheets and everything and he's he's filled up two big like 100 liter chests mm-hmm. of games that he's taking so I can't really accuse him of um not using them but he has bought a couple of games that I have previously got rid of, and they've come, you know, they've come in <laughs> to the house again all that time trying to get rid of them, and they've turned up, and I'm like, oh, why'd you buy that? I've just sold that game. <laughs> so uh, there what, you go. What, what, what do you think it is that? Because because I know you enjoy all three types of games. I know you enjoy yeah, role playing games. You you have a regular role playing game group with the family, right? Yeah. What, what is it that makes the role playing games easier to resist? Um, I know that's a tough I, one. I think, I think the trouble is with with role playing games. You got a DM, who we can think of as a player, and I do think of as a player. And as groups go, my home group is is we all DM, and when we play a session, we're all contributing. And I've talked about it before, but you still. Someone is buying the game, reading it, and getting all hyped up about it. And you can get yourself into this. You get into this little zone where you think it's great. And I did it recently, and I got carried away. For I redo my jungle game. I do it as black hack. I'll roll it forward into the future, and that'll be fine. Everybody will love it. And uh, the first session we did like a session zero online during COVID. And it it was fine, and I thought, oh, that went all right. But it it went all right, and all right is just not really good enough. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it it 
never got the traction. And then I thought, you know what? I'm not, I'm just not going to bother. I'm not going to do it. I, I said, you know what, guys, although that went all right, you know what? I don't, I don't think I'm not going to bother with that. And rather than it being or go, well, I don't know. I just thought, nah, if it's not like flying and like everybody's pumped, it's just, it's, it's not worth it. You've just got to get so much enthusiasm and buy in for an RPG. It, because everybody has, has kind of, they got to invest in it for it to, you know, yeah, you could do a one shot and they'll always do a one shot, but then, you got to put a lot of time in, haven't you, to kind of like learn a new system and come up with something to, to just do a one shot. It's different if you're doing a convention circuit and you're going to come up with a one shot and you're going to play it again and again with loads of different groups. And that's a different thing. In a home group, you don't want to be bringing a new RPG every week with a one shot and putting everybody through that. With a board game, you could do that. Mm-hmm. It's, it's much easier. Oh, here's a board game. We'll play it tonight. Blah de blah, and and you can tend like if you have a few bad board games, you could normally sell them and not lose out much. But I don't know. I sort of had a my bookshelf groaning under the weight of RPGs. What, Even it, things like Kids on Bikes, mm-hmm. I couldn't I couldn't get that off the ground. Well, and the insidious thing with RPGs are the PDFs. Right. Because uh, with RPGs, you know, oh, I can buy it cheaper because it's just a PDF. But the P- those PDFs stack up and stack up. And if you even read them, which I know a lot of us have a ton of PDFs we've never even read, but you can't resell them. You can't, you, you know, so that's just money down. the. If you don't at least read it to mine it for ideas, it's just money down the drain, you yeah. know, where at least with a physical product, you could resell it down the road. But yeah. Yeah. The, the new the new shiny the, the new shiny is another massive procrastination thing for me and distractor as well and the pdfs are so easy to get more of them and just go scrolling through your your uh, your drive through rpg looking for things and you know some of the killer ones are then bundle deal you know humble bundles and stuff yeah and you yeah. just get masses masses <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, oh my god! And you dare even open it for fear of like this rabbit hole that you go down. Oh god, yeah, PDFs. Yeah, I tell you what, they're they're a growing. They're coming up on my radar. They're becoming a larger problem for me now. Um, but, but because they are useful, if if it's a game you're playing, yeah, then there there is great utility in the PDF, right? Because yeah. you can take it with you on your tablet or on your smartphone, so you can be traveling. You. You be on your family vacation, you, you know, have your pocket full of dice, or you could use an online die roller. Doesn't matter. You you can go on family vacation with nothing but your cell phones and play role complicated role playing games, complicated rule sets. You know, the Fantasy Flight, Star Wars, and all that. You can get the die roller for those specialty dice on your phone, so you could play mm-hmm. that game all off your phone these days. You know, mm-hmm. I, well, I don't know if they sell PDFs that, but you know what I'm saying, though. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. So it, so there's definitely utility, but it's definitely also trap is the wrong word but it's definitely a a, dis, a, a temptation to yeah. to buy things that they'll never get used tumble bundles and the bundle holding you're right because you get these great offers and you look mm-hmm. at that and you're like wow look at all that stuff or like, like when they close out like cubicle seven when they when they lost the like the middle earth rights and mm-hmm. they said here's all the one ring stuff for a low low price and here's yeah. avengers of middle earth for a low low price which are great games but yeah. if you're not playing you know so it's super tempting to buy that but then it just sits there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You can't do anything with it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I guess I'm just thinking that the, the utility. You talk about the utility in PDFs, and I guess one thing you could do, one thing you can do, is you've got this big repository of all your stuff, haven't you? And it, it you know, if you're on drive through, you don't even really need to download it all, do you? It can, it could kind of like live up there in the cloud. And then what you could do, you could just like bring down. Mm-hmm. some stuff to kind of like process and just think to yourself, right, I'm going to set this up on maybe on like a tablet and just bring in a curated list of things that you're just going to deal with. And then sort of say to yourself, right, I'm not going to bring anything else onto this device until I've dealt with this and either like took it off. You know, you could, it'd be really easy to do like a one in one out type of system mm-hmm. using PDFs and just kind of, 
I don't know. It's, it's like you have to train yourself, isn't it? It's like, it's yeah. kind of, it's like it's, a discipline. It, and I've done that in some respects. So like, I still enjoy reading comic books and especially the comic books of my youth. I, I still like revisiting some of those things occasionally and both Marvel and DC comics have subscription services where you can pay a, an annual fee and you have mm -hmm. access to just about their entire back catalogs back mm -hmm. to the in in DC it goes back to the 1930s you know and Marvel goes back to the 60s and and so instead of buying all these comic books that you know now you can just read them digitally and with a subscription service you, you know you can kind of bounce around and even if you somebody isn't really plussed on a lot of the newer stuff you've got decades of old ones to read and and I've gone I've kind of dedicated myself to that for those instead of going out and buying you, you know all these old comics to read and, and that's been really good and and there are some Kindle has like Kindle Unlimited and you can do that like with books where they have limited um, amounts of things or audio audible there are audiobooks that they have a lot that are free that you can listen to and and folks don't tell anybody I told you this but if you go to YouTube there are a lot of audiobooks on YouTube you can listen to on on YouTube um I don't know how legit those recordings are up on YouTube but they're up there and 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 you can listen to them and and the same thing arguably for movies for people who are into TV and movies with streaming now so much is available now just you, you know you don't you know these things that we would have never who would have thought Blake 7 you could watch with just Clicking on your TV and, and rewatch it, right? Mm. Right, but it, but it's out there. Or, or um, Red Dwarf. But you know, for me, growing up, especially in the states, when we saw Red Dwarf, it was because the local public, the uh, public television station was doing a fun drive, and they would show Red Dwarf during their fun drive to get you to send money to keep them afloat. Where now, I can just click a button on my TV and watch Red Dwarf to my heart's content. You know, if yeah. you're into Star Wars, there are channels that are all Star Wars all day long. <laughs> yeah, or not Star Wars I'm, or Star Trek, but you know Star what I'm Trek. saying. Yeah, 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 Star Trek all day long. So yeah, there's a lot to be said great for it. in some ways. Yeah. yeah, but when it comes to the games, it, it's more of a like I said. I don't want to use the word trap, but to some because, like I say, the PDFs do have great utility. But I think you have to be like you say. You have to train yourself. And you have to be smart how you use them, so you don't fall into just buying things that you're never going to touch, and and you're yeah. going to forget about. Yeah. Yeah, because you 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 can just it's like you dis, you're distracting yourself from what you profess that you want to do. Like I say, I'm a, I'm a gamer. Well, I'm not a gamer if I'm spending all my time just collecting stuff. I'm mm -hmm. a gamer if I'm gaming. So I have to keep kind of like telling myself this. And I'm this is not preaching to anyone. You know, you do it how you want to do it, of course. But just my experience, I've I feel like I've just for a little while there, you know, perhaps when it may be part of the podcast, perhaps the podcasting weren't helping me. And I, I know prior to that, I was listening to the Dice Tower mm -hmm. and they're doing these reviews all the time and they're hyping up these games. And they, I'm listening to reviews and they're talking about, oh, yeah, and this introduces this mechanism that works better than it did in that game. And you start like you're constantly striving for the next best game that that really nails the deck builder or does this or does that. And you just, when you look back, you know, hindsight, with hindsight, you look back and you think, well, I could have just carried on playing Dominion mm -hmm. and, I'd have been and I'd have been fine and I'd have been really good at Dominion by now. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and I'd have had a load more space or like, one of the first, I think it was the first game that got me back into like board games was Ticket to Ride. Mm -hmm. And that is still the game that hits the table very often. It hits the table all the time. Ad admittedly, there has been expansions, but they're not them expansions that blow out the game. They're just more of the same, but a different board or a different experience or some different rules. And you and not like the mistake that Talisman made where you have all the boards out. It's just you go, all right, we'll play Europe or we'll play America or we'll play Switzerland is a favourite of mine. For free players, you play Switzerland. It's out, hour, hour and a half, you're done, you pack it away, back on the shelf. Everyone in the house and my family knows how to play it and it just keeps on hitting the table and, and they're the guy they're the g great games i love i love i love it and and there's 
you get to know that you learn the subtleties of it as well because you've played it so many times. You get to appreciate it more. Um, and there's so many games I've played once, they've gone back on the shelf and, and they've never been played again. And I think, to, yeah, that's just a, a bummer. Yeah, I agree. Well, I want to be precious to your time. We've been at this for about an hour now. So I, inevitable, wouldn't it? Yeah. It's, but I, I thank you so much for coming on talk with me. I'm I'm so glad you're you're still podcasting. I'm curious to see wh- where you go because you're at 500 now. You you've you've crossed that threshold, so it'll be interesting to see what's next for Spike Pit. That will be interesting. That nobody is more interested to know the answer to that question than Spike Pit himself. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, you take care of yourself. You, you know, take care of your family and, and I will talk to you again soon, my friend. You too, Jace. Thanks for having me on. You look after yourself. Uh, it's always a pleasure. A nerd simple broadcast, so people podcast. Let's savor all the fables from the sign of Capstrong. The all stars and pods pass. Yeah.